I will do something uh, a bit different this Sunday. I will preface my sermon with a warning label. Today I will speak about prayer. And I have a tendency to get a little bit on the theological side, floating up in the ether. Uh, but I want it to be something very practical, something that perhaps we will all benefit from. But why a warning? A warning because if you truly seek to undertake a life of prayer, it will be the most difficult thing that you ever do. Now here I'm not speaking of the bazooki cross we sometimes make before a meal or a few prayers we recite from a book in the mornings or evenings. And I, I'm not saying this to condemn that, but if we truly wish to pray, we will struggle. We will suffer. We will recognize a sinfulness and darkness within us that we never even imagined was there. We will have our eyes opened and be awakened to the suffering of a world around us that was inconceivable to us before we began to pray. At the same time, if we truly pray, we will experience within it a joy that is insurpassable. A nearness to God, an experience of a brightness that will make the sun appear to us as a shadow. So pray only if you're truly willing to stand before the living God. So we'll begin with what is prayer? What does it mean to pray? The simple answer, which is often the right answer, is it is communication and communion. It is our speaking to God, our calling upon Him. But it is also His speaking to us, speaking to us in His silence, speaking to us through the Scriptures, speaking to us through the beauty of the world and the life he never ceases to give to us. Prayer is also a remembrance. Our Holy Father, St. Nicholas Kavasilas, tells us that we were given the ability to remember. The very purpose of our memory is that we might carry around with us at all times and in every place the name of God. I went from my favorite saint, so now I'll go to one of my favorite singers. There's a song that some of you may have heard called The Nearness of You. This is a, a great song, but it's one that after I had begun to struggle to pray, I realized how true it was. That when it comes down to us, it's not all the things that God has given to us, but simply the nearness of him. St. Sophroni, one of our contemporary saints, has told us that truly praying is to live prayer. So now we've gone from what we will go to why. Why should we pray? This is perhaps the easiest of the questions we'll ask ourselves today because how can we not? Why pray? If God is at every moment unceasingly, without end, giving to us, giving gifts, the gift of life, the gift of every breath, the gift of the loved one who's sitting beside you at this moment, the gift of the hope that the loved one no longer sitting beside you is in his embrace. How can we not at every moment call upon God with gratitude? 
The gospel reading today tells us about four friends who have a friend who is paralyzed. And they try to bring him to Christ, but Christ is in a room that's overcrowded. And they're unable to get to him. And so these friends that loved, what love they must have had for their paralyzed friend, they go up and they break a hole in the roof. And they bring their paralyzed friend to the feet of Christ. When we pray for others, this is precisely what we're doing. We're taking that person that we're praying for. We're breaking open the roof, not of some earthly abode, but of heaven itself. And laying that person at the feet of Christ. How can we not pray? How can we not embrace those who are in our lives? Why do we pray? Imagine, if you will, an eagle that never flies. An eagle that maybe my neighbors have chickens. And they're always caught up with what's going on in the ground. Always chasing each other, making noise, showing off. Imagine if you had an eagle that was like one of these chickens. It was just walking around. It would probably be the most pitiable eagle that's ever lived. The eagle was given wings that it might fly. That it might leave behind the earth and enter into heaven. Why must we pray? We must pray because for us, that is our very purpose. The reason why the eagle flies, we were given wings that are prayer, that we might enter into the heavens itself. The next question is, when do we pray and where do we pray? And this is a very simple answer. We should pray in all places and at all times. There's no place that cannot become a place of encounter with God. There are no times where we will not benefit and we will not grow by praying to the Lord. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, we come to how. How do we pray? The simple answer, probably the best answer, would be just for me to say, I have no earthly idea, and go and finish the liturgy for you. If you've ever ran a race, you might have had a coach, and the coach may have given you some advice on how to eat to prepare yourself to the race how to practice, uh, maybe even something about form. But what your coach probably didn't tell you or teach you is actually how to run. Right? That running is something that was taught to you by your mother, by your father. And so I will leave the actual how we pray to God, your father, teach you but at the same time as a priest as a bit of a coach I feel like I need to tell you how to prepare for this race the first and most important thing if you are about to pray is humility Abba Isaac the Syrian says when you approach God become in your mind as an ant as a lisping child that knows not its left from its right. Call upon him with your heart. If we truly have humility, we will have gratitude because we will realize that all the gifts given to us we're not worthy of. We will be unable to judge our neighbor. Humility. St. Paisios tells us that if we wish to hear the voice of God, we must turn the dial 
of our spiritual radio to the station of humility. And then his voice will come to us clearly. Secondly, when we pray, we're speaking to a who. The prayer is not just some sort of recitation of a magical formula, but we're speaking to a someone. And that someone is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is in the mysteries that Christ is made present within us. The one to whom we speak when we pray. And so it's necessary for us to receive the mysteries. It's necessary for us to know about who it is we speak to when we pray. And so it's necessary for us to study the scriptures. How do we pray? The church has given us so many simple words. The Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Kyrie Isu Christe eleison me. We have the prayer of the publican, the prayer of the prodigal son. So many examples and scriptures of those who have prayed. The prayer of the good thief who opened paradise with his prayer. Remember me, Lord, when you come in your kingdom. And perhaps we in our modern day, find ourselves too busy to even thank God with a simple prayer throughout our day. So St. Nicholas Cavasilas tells us it is enough then to just throughout the day and the time that it takes to put one foot in front of the other, remember that God exists and that he loves you. And so finally, If you wish to know what prayer is, if you truly desire to know why we pray and to how to pray, must simply pray. May Christ our God send upon each and every one of you the Holy Spirit to instruct you and guide you on this journey that will lead us to his Father. Amen.